My average work week is about 60 hours. Yeah, I'm doing about 10 hours a day on average, uh, about six days a week. Oh yeah, and, and I do work on Sundays as well. Many times I'm working on a Sunday right now. And you know what? Here's the thing, dudes. Here's the thing. I, I freaking enjoy <laughs> what I'm doing. I, I like making videos. I like connecting with people through my YouTube channel. And I like, uh, I, I like doing uh, art for video games. It's like my greatest joy in life. To me, it is life. It is life fulfillment. It feels good. Why do I work so many hours and why do I, I work so diligently? Because I don't feel like I'm as gifted or talented as some other people who do it a little bit more easily than me. I have to work twice as hard. And for some artists out there, you know, they'll they'll see a video that I do like this where I'm talking about putting in that extra time. I'm talking about making sacrifices to accomplish your goals. And some people will get very angry at me because they've been convinced that, and I don't understand I, uh, some reality they live in where you can kind of chill and take it easy and everybody will think that you're amazing. I've never had that. I, I don't know what that's like. Uh, <laughs> I would say that I, I grew up with a lot of disadvantages. I was very poor. I grew up in a, a, a very rough neighborhood. And uh, and I was kind of told that I wouldn't really amount to much. I mean, that was just what society had deemed for me. Like, these things aren't for us. Opportunities to work in video games or film or, or to be a successful artist. That was just out of the realm of what was considered reasonable reality in the environment that I grew up in. And so I had to compensate uh, by putting in way more than what other people might have had to. If, if there were people who had advantages of uh, parents buying them expensive tools to get them a start or going to some kind of an art school, I never had that either. So I really had to force my way in by being exceptional as much as I could, like to be my most exceptional self, I should say, to strive for personal excellence. And I would say that I am still not there. I don't, f I don't feel like I I've earned my ability to chill. Although, although even at my 65 hour work week, I still feel like I get a, I get a, an hour or two uh, every other night or so to play a video game. And I watch my fair share of television shows and movies, but usually I'm working while I'm watching them. And quite honestly, I feel blessed, uh, even though, because to me, I get to work uh, that long. And here's the difference. A lot of people hate their job. They, even once they become an artist, a professional artist, they will hate what they do. And, they're, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, there are times when I'm like, I really, I don't wanna be doing what I'm, <laughs> I don't wanna be doing this rendering on this wood block or, or this armor or whatever. I, there are days when I'm just not, I'm not into it. I wish I could be just playing a game, you know? Uh, but when you, you grow up with very little, you find that you really appreciate uh, when you got something when you've earned something for yourself, you've kicked your way into, you kicked down the doors and, and worked your way into a, a business that, that actually makes you money and, and you're pleased to do it. And you, you, you find a lot more gratitudes when you've struggled through some things. And this video isn't all about, I, I don't wanna make a video that's like, oh, it was so hard for me. No, 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 but make no mistake, it wasn't easy and, and it shouldn't be. And if you're feeling like it's really hard to, achieve your art goals, well, you know, you're not alone. It should be difficult. It should be challenging. And when you do overcome it, it will feel rewarding. It will feel even more rewarding. And if you're not blessed with, you know, the ability to go to an art school or have an expensive art education, I didn't either. And, and you should know that. Like, you can still overcome it. If you can see other people do it, you can overcome it. And if you don't have access to expensive art tools, you don't need those either. You know, I did a, a studio tour video uh, a couple of weeks ago and it, it showed off a, a couple of the items that I use in my my work setup and I kind of regret that I didn't get to mention I didn't have most of that most of my art career I was actually working on just pencil and paper for pretty much the first half of my 30-year career like use what you got be grateful for those uh, few resources that you have and excel beyond uh, what you know maybe there are people who have talent and things come easier to them, you just have to double down. There's a character in Naruto named uh, Rock Lee. 
this guy, he actually never had any gifted ninjutsu talents. He had to like work twice as hard so he straps extra weights to his legs so that he can overcome. So that when he takes those off, he's like twice as fast. He trains with extra weight on his shoulders. I feel like that's the opposite of what a lot of the mentality that a lot of people will take, unfortunately, that they just want the road to be a little easier for themselves, but you're not doing yourself any favor by doing that. Like certainly, you know, don't punish yourself just for the sake of punishing yourself. Don't put in tons of extra hours if it's ineffective. But if you're aiming to achieve a goal, man, don't be afraid of the work. It will pay off for you. I think that there were times when I wished that it was easier to to make a career, you know, as an artist for myself. I, I, there were a lot of times when I wished it was easier or that there was a clearer roadmap. But I'm so glad that it, it was challenging because it makes me really appreciate when I, I did establish a little bit of a foothold there. So yeah, I, I get to make my own stuff. I get to make my own games. And so if I have to be up until 3 or 4 a.m., building out that level or adding those, you know, maybe fog to some environments or some, you know, candle lights or something that would just really enhance that art and really like make players get excited about what they're going to be playing. Like to me, I don't mind. I don't mind putting in that extra time. I wish I could work faster, certainly. And I'm always looking for ways to work faster, but I don't mind putting in a lot of time if it's necessary to really make a great product for the players. Now, there are a couple of things to consider here because I don't, I don't think like everybody that works for me should have to work as much as I do. I don't think that everybody who works for a company should have to uh, work as much as I do. I mean, if you want exceptional rewards, you'll probably have to make exceptional sacrifices. I do believe in that. Uh, I, I do think that that's true. But oftentimes what gets left out of these conversations about how long you should be working is, is the balance, the ebb and flow of things. There will come a time when you have to go into crunch mode. Oh my God, he used the C word. Yeah, I'm talking about putting in those late nights on something that you're dreaming of making because you're proud to do it. Uh, I'm not talking about a company where the guy standing over you saying, if you don't put in those extra hours and sacrifice your family, then you're fired. You know, I, I, that, I, I would condemn that. In the, the greatest of terms, I, I, don't, I don't accept that. I, I would never do that to the artists that work for me. And, and I, nev I never liked when that was done to me. I come from that era when that back when game employers, game studios would do that to you. <laughs> they could say, hey, if you don't want to put in crunch, that's OK. You're free not to. We'll just find somebody else, you know. Uh, and that was shady and crappy and, and, and I would, I wouldn't endorse that in any way, but you know, as a person who is building a business and, and trying to make a product for customers, customers don't care. Customers don't care if you sacrificed a lot. Customers who buy your product don't care if it's, if it, uh, you had to do late nights or if you had, you went through family problems or don't have friends or whatever. <laughs> they don't care if you sacrificed your, uh, your mental health or emotional health. What they care about is whether or not the game that you made is, is worth their money. That's all they care about. And, um, and I, I, I it's sad. I mean, it's heartbreaking, but, uh, that's just the truth of it. And if you're running your own business at some point or another, you're going to have to like sit down with your loved ones or your, your friends or whatever, and just go, well, Hey man, I'm sorry. I'm not around for a while. Like this is, this is my dream and I got to make it good if we want to have a success with this thing. And, and that's a, the ebb and flow because there will also come times after you've done that crunch time. And after you've put in that extra time that hopefully you get a financial reward as well as the reward of winding down. Now, something weird happens because I recently just went through this. I was building a demo for the Twilight Monk game for a publisher and it was six weeks of doing just nonstop work. I did very little gaming, very little of anything other than exercise, eat and work. That was it. And after the demo was done, I, I basically, I was supposed to decompress. I was supposed to start living a normal life as a human being again, and not just this game development machine, but I couldn't do it. I, I, I could not make the mental shift to go from crunch mode back to just normal, like, hey, maybe I'm only working nine, 10 hours uh, a, a day now uh, for five days. I tried to take weekends off. I didn't know how. I'd forgotten. It was like a weird shift in my mental state. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was feeling anxious like I was still under the gun, even though I wasn't. Uh, and by the way, 
it paid off. <laughs> and I, should have, I should have some pretty good news about that soon, I, I hope, uh, because the demo is rad, it's super cool. And I'm very proud of it. And there was no way that I could have accomplished that uh, without putting in that kind of work. It would have taken me, you know, five or six months, but instead I did it in six weeks. The publisher said it was unheard of. They just don't experience indie game developers doing that kind of a thing anymore, uh, like they used to. So as far as I'm concerned, yeah, I mean, if there's a lot of people out there that are just taking it easy and chilling, <laughs> and they're, th they're expecting all the rewards as if they were working hard for it. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm glad to swoop in and, and take those opportunities from them. They can be left wondering why they didn't get it. If, if you were to look at my career and think that there was anything that you were, that you admired or uh, were envious of or wished that you could achieve, you should know that it's not because it's not because it was easy for me to, to get those things. I, I had some great opportunities, don't get me wrong. A lot of life is about relationships and a lot of your success is going to be contingent upon how well you get along with others and being in the right place at the right time. Those things are important too. But I can tell you honestly, man, <laughs> this is hard work <laughs> and I'm not afraid of it. I enjoy it. I love coming out the other side of it. A uh, part of building that kind of, um, I think building that kind of mentality of working hard and then feeling the reward of it, taking a breather and resetting a little bit, I think that that comes from practice. It's like when you want to run a marathon, you don't just run out and like go to the marathon and show up and then do your whatever it is, 20 miles or how many miles is it? 26 point something miles. You don't just run out on day the day of the marathon and do 26 miles of running. You will injure yourself. Uh, so you have to build up to it. Uh, you have to practice. And that means sitting down. If, if you have a hard time, like I know I have some friends of mine with ADHD and I, I feel like at times I str struggled with focus. So like you, you have to build up to it. So start out with just two hour chunks. Like don't get up. It's nothing distracting. Put on a long movie and promise yourself. I'm not getting up ex for anything except using the bathroom. Uh, in that entire two hour period and your timer is when the movie's done. You know what I mean? Practice that. I do that a lot. Actually. Uh, I've been watching, binging the star Trek, uh, the classic stuff from back in the day. And I'll just sit there for like two or three hours without getting up at all. And that helps me to stay focused. It's just on in the background while I'm painting, while I'm drawing, while I'm programming. Then you finish that, you accomplish something, you take a break to go get a coffee or, uh, walk around the block or, uh, grab a bite to eat, uh, or just chat with a friend on the phone while you're working. You know, maybe there are some things where you can double up and, and kill two birds with one stone. So you're keeping in touch with people that you care about while simultaneously being productive. And, and that's a lot of the tricks that I use to stay productive. There are a lot of video games that maybe I don't need to play. I could just be watching a playthrough of if it's a very story based game. A lot of times the older shows are best for uh, watching while you're working because they're not visually that crazy. Like, like I said, the Star Trek original series, there's not a lot of special effects. There. There's not a lot of reason to look up and see what's going on, except for like a few key historic moments in television, you know? And there are many days when I just lose track of time and, and, uh, and it's hard to even gauge until I'm looking at like the end of the week. How much work did I get done this week? Oh my God. I got so much done and that's a great feeling. That is a tremendous feeling. And especially when you're not thinking about it, you're just doing, you're just getting in there and doing it. But uh, I, as I mentioned before, I do think it's really important that you pay attention to uh, whether or not what you're putting all that time into is effective. If you're still like training and still learning the essentials, the fundamentals of drawing, you might have to give it a lot more of your conscious awareness. You might have to give it a lot more of your attention. Maybe you can't binge uh, a show. Maybe you have to be uh, binging my box sets of tutorials or something that's very art related, something that maybe while you're working, you can be listening to somebody like myself mentioning some techniques and tricks that maybe you can be applying to what it is that you're doing while you're doing it. And that's, that's what I designed those videos for. And now I've got like eight years worth of just literally like almost a thousand hours 
of video content and audio uh, from my, my box sets of tutorials. If you wanted to like just have something binge worthy on your in on in the background while you're learning, while you're developing your skills, I don't you know, hear me talking about like, oh, work on, you know, here's some basic fundamental things. If you're having pr trouble with perspective, try out this trick, you know, all that stuff. And my YouTube channel is good for that too. So I would wish you all the success in the world and not just success, but good health too. So don't forget to take the time for the essential human needs, human touch, human uh, connection and conversation. Take time for your friends, ideally build friendships that, like I said, you can talk to people while, you know, while you're working, while you're being productive, make friends with people that also uh, are supportive and, and have uh, similar goals. That's a, a huge benefit uh, because you can root each other on to really support uh, each other. And that can be really essential in those difficult times and also challenge each other. Somebody who's better than you at some things, and maybe uh, ways that you can help each other out, uh, maybe with different strengths and weaknesses. These are huge factors when it comes to having a healthy social life, as well as having a good sense of commitment. I found that when I've got somebody to sort of be accountable to, uh, like I just started working with a programmer, uh, assistant and, uh, man, when I got somebody to like show stuff to like, Oh, check out the progress on this thing. It makes a big difference with my productivity. Cause I can't wait to share this new thing that hopefully will get that person excited and then uh, vice versa when they do updates on their end you know i get pretty excited when they pass the ball back to me and i'm able to like pick up where they left off and then i've got new new tools to work with or something like that and that's exciting you know working with a team working with other people that have a mutual goal uh, you know that can be huge for fulfilling a lot of needs uh, and I'm a very goal oriented person. So it's certainly really beneficial for my mentality. And most importantly, it makes work not feel like work. Anyway, I wouldn't wish for you to sacrifice anything that's too painful for you to sacrifice, but it's not a bad thing to challenge yourself with putting in a little bit more and maybe finding ways to multitask to fulfill all of your needs. So anyway, that's it for me on this week's video. I want to thank you so much for stopping by. If you are interested in my tutorials, man, I've been putting together uh, the, I have so many workshops and tutorials now. You can basically skip art school and just go and, and <laughs> pick up my art tutorials. I got a letter from somebody the other day that said that and some art school wanted to charge them $80,000 a year to learn concept art. And I was like, are you insane? What, are they crazy? Are they nuts? Uh, dude, just buy my workshops. All right, dudes, that's it for me this week. And I'll see you in the next video. All right, ciao.